back to floral fusion, where we fuse the art of floral design with a trend in the industry. We are now in the month of November. The holidays are coming up. It's a really exciting time. And this month in November, I'm going to focus on bouquets to art and taking inspiration from classic art pieces. So every year at the De Young Museum in San Francisco, there's actually an event called Bouquets to Art. And what floral artists do is they look at a classic piece of art and then they make a flower arrangement that is inspired by those art pieces. And I really love that because as a designer and as an artist myself, it kind of combines all of my passions together. Uh, and so I really want this month's episode to focus on that. The artist I have chosen to take inspiration from this month in November is Claude Monet. So Impressionist painting is actually one of my favorite styles and uh, I love all the pastel colors and I have really taken a lot of inspiration from Monet's paintings. I think they're absolutely beautiful and they capture the essence of the moment. So today I'm going to teach you how to make a floral arrangement for the holidays inside of a butternut squash, believe it or not and it's going to be inspired by Impressionist painting, specifically Monet's paintings. I can't wait to start. Let's do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my butternut squash and I'm going to cut the top off about right here. And then I'm gonna hollow out the insides, okay? So, be very careful when you do this, but I'm just going to cut the top off, kind of work my, my way around here. Again, be very careful with the sharp knife. Okay. So now I have the inside that I'm going to hollow out and I have the top that we can use uh, as kind of a decorative element on the table. So I have a nice little hollow base on the inside and what I'm going to do is I kept the top because you can kind of set it up against the butternut squash once we're done with the floral arrangement. What's nice about the butternut squash is that it stands up on its own just like a vase and it's different it's a different look than a pumpkin because you see a lot of pumpkins with floral arrangements in them they look absolutely gorgeous. This is just a different take on it. So I have my Oasis foam that I'm actually going to cut and put inside of this, but first I need to soak it. So let's do that right now. I'm filling up my sink. I dropped my Oasis foam in. You can see the water is absorbing into the Oasis foam, just like a sponge. And that's what we want. Now we're going to cut this Oasis foam once it's wet to fit into our butternut squash. So, turn off my sink and watch all of that water absorb into the oasis. It's very satisfying. As soon as you see it all ready to go and absorbed, just like that, once it gets dark, then it's ready to cut. So I'm just going to cut off probably a quarter and then we're just going to be a sculptor and sculpt it in. Now obviously you can see this is too big to fit in, right? So we have to make it more round or kind of cut off some of the 
edges here. So we're making it look a little bit more like this. Now, clearly, still not going to fit in, so we need to go smaller. Again, all trial and error. And then I'm actually going to probably have to angle it towards the bottom edge so it can fit in to the base of the butternut squash, which has a little bit of a narrow base as you go down further. Now, I could have hollowed it out more if I wanted to, but I decided to leave it somewhat shallow. So I'm just going to cut at an angle. until I feel like maybe that'll fit in there. Again, trial and error, guys. Looks pretty good, fits in pretty nicely. Now all I have to do is chop the top off a little bit. So I'm gonna go in, cut the top off. Just like that, guys, okay? The next step is to add some floral tape around both edges to secure the Oasis foam inside. Don't worry about it showing because we will cover that with foliage. This is what floral tape looks like. It's waterproof. So I'm going to grab some scissors and cut this. So it can fit around the edges just like this. So I'm just going to see how much tape I need. I'm going to put it around. And I think that'll work out just fine because it's small. Now, if you had a larger opening, you'd probably want to do one more around this side just to reinforce it. Okay, we are ready to start adding the flowers. All right, so I have my Impressionist-inspired floral collection here to work with today. These are bay leaves, and they also relate to the holidays that they have nice fragrance and this is just great uh, to use in floral arrangements. I love it and you can actually even take the greens out and dry them if you want and place them in a vase in your house and they actually preserve fairly nicely. I have some tulips. Oops, the stem broke. We'll put that one aside. Really pretty. Delphinium. Some spray roses, some lavender, and these are called nigella pods. Very whimsy, very impressionistic. So we're ready to start putting our flower arrangement together, but before we do that, let's fill this with just a little bit of water before we start. So I'm going to dry off the edges and it's okay some of the water might spill over totally fine it's going to absorb into the oasis foam so I have regular flower clippers a floral knife just like all the rest of my videos we are going to start with the greens first and then our focal flower and then our fillers and so, I think I want to create like an asymmetrical shape in this, which means that it'll kind of be higher on one side and lower on the other. So the leaves, what, the way that I'm shaping this is making sure that it kind of drapes down to create a really pretty flowy effect.
And then also I can cover up the floral tape by angling the stem up when I put it in the floral foam. And all the stems will stay in place. Okay, so we can go back and add more greens later. I'm now going to start adding in some of the focal flowers, like the roses. These are really, it has like a really pretty pastel tone, which oftentimes Monet's paintings were beautiful pastel colors. And pink and orange look really nice together. So I'm just I kind of just stuck that in the center there, and then I want to create a shape, a nice shape here. So now I've created somewhat of an asymmetrical shape, and I'm going to go ahead and start adding in my tulips. side. So depending on if this is going to be a centerpiece in the center of your table or a statement arrangement in your entryway, you can kind of use your best judgment on where you want this to be placed. <music> Fun fact number 10. Did you know that I am also an artist? As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, how design can really be anything, right? It can be floral design, it can be painting, and everything weaves together and becomes a creative process. So I'm very excited to be able to share these floral design skills and techniques with you. I really hope you enjoy this 12-part series as we're coming to an end. December is my last episode. But I am launching a new project, and that's called Floral Fusion Art Studio. These are a few of my pieces that I would like to show you. I have not launched this yet, and I plan on selling my art on Etsy. And my chosen medium is watercolor. This episode was a perfect time for me to share this with you since we're talking about flowers to art. So, this is just a sneak peek into what I have been working on. I'm super excited about this new project. And actually, this painting really, the color palette reminds me a lot of what we did today together. So, I really hope you were inspired by this month's episode, and thank you for watching. More to come on my art studio, and we'll see you in December. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye.